Some really exciting news for the category in the, the past week. Just tell us more about this agreement to race in Malaysia and perhaps how long you've been working on this project. Oh, look, we, you know, we've been working on the project pretty much since I came on board. We've, uh, we've got a really strong international representative uh, in Asia who's based in Singapore, uh, who's built a lot of the tracks in the past and has a number of core relationships. Uh, but for us, it's, I mean, it's, it's really exciting. Uh, it's a massive build right in the heart of the city. I mean, it's, a, it's an economic based, tourism based uh, event, if you like. And it's a, a very, very ambitious project. It's gonna be an absolutely stunning track taking in some incredible sites uh, through, through the capital in terms of KL. And uh, it's actually a free event. So, you know, the, it's, a, it's City Hall giving back to the, to the punters, so to speak. And then there's an upgrade policy to say so to buy a grandstand or to buy a paddock pass, all those types of things are about 50 ringgit, which is you know, sort of pretty affordable from a fan's point of view. So I think again, it'll, it'll attract a huge crowd and uh, they're very sophisticated motorsport operators. I mean, there's a lot of gentleman racer categories there, and we really bring the punch to them in terms of being, you know, sort of a mainstream headline act uh, that they can really enjoy. So a few of our key people, drivers and the like, will head over uh, in August as a bit of a bit of a showcase. What we can bring to the table in in 2016. Just tell us about that. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's very much a case of promoting uh, 2016. So what we've done is we've we've taken a car from each um, manufacturer. So we've got Craig Lowndes, obviously, in, in a Holden, uh, Scotty McLaughlin in the Volvo, Chaz Mostert in the, in the Ford, uh, Will Davison in the Erebus AMG E63, and, of course, Todd Kelly uh, in the Nissan. So it'll be a, a party of probably 40 or 50 people travelling, and we're going to do it, do it properly, do a number of street exhibitions for them, do some rides uh, for the key Asian media. And, it, you know, it's extraordinary, Rusty, when we go to these places. I mean, all the riders for all the major mainstream, you know, magazines were there, and they were just blown away that the likes of Craig Lowndes or Scotty McLaughlin, the people they watch on air, are coming. They're coming. They're actually coming. You know, that kind of, um, you know, sort of um, response is what we met with, which is just, you know, how huge our category is and how well, well respected it is no matter where we go in the, in the world. Although overseas races in the past have made uh, economic sense, there's been some criticism, essentially, of their, their relevance to a, an Australian sport. How do you feel about that and why Asia? This is, I guess, important for the, the sport to be in that zone, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, when, when you look at all the international races, people kind of rewrite history a little bit. You know, we've had four or five very successful years in the Middle East and there have been, you know, sort of great races that have brought incredible relevance to new regions and new markets and we've done a really good job uh, for those markets and, you know, we've been there, Formula One's been there, MotoGP's been there, you know, so, we, so we've, been, we've been there at the, at the cutting, cutting edge. I think China in 2005, we were way ahead of our time. You know, the market wasn't ready for us. And so, you know, it's pretty amazing to think in 2005 that V8 supercars raced in China now that China's, you know, such a sought after market. Um, but for us, you know, when you look at our sponsors, you look at where a lot of our sponsorship is headquartered, where manufacturing is and those things, you know, Asia is um, critically, critically important. And then more importantly, you know, for our fans, it's just like watching a race in the same time zone as Perth, you know, so it's very relevant rather than coming in at 5am in the morning, you know, out of somewhere like America. So again, very, very um, relevant for us. And of course, let's not forget that, you know, our telecasts go out to 206 million homes globally. So these guys are consistently watching us, whether we're on the Gold Coast or in Sydney, uh, you know, sort of very, you know, very important for the sport. You say uh, a second race is, is likely to happen, not in Thailand. Can you shed some light on where it may happen and will we go back to back with these events? Uh, look, it, again it depends on the timing. I mean the, the, the reality of the calendar is that uh, that August date for the KL City Grand Prix is almost perfect. It means rejigging a little bit of July uh, but you know sort of a two-week gap between the previous race into KL, a three-week gap, another race and then Sandown is absolutely perfect. So there's no need to go back to back. Um, the other race, you know, there's, there's a, a varying uh, degree of dates. Um, a lot of people want October because it's a good time. Obviously, that's almost impossible with Bathurst and, and Gold Coast. So whether that's November or whether it's slightly earlier in the year in September or something or the like, um, we'll see. But I, I, I highly doubt it'll be back to back. Some fans uh, are worried about whether this will come at the expense of, of a domestic round. Well, what's your response to this? Oh, look, absolutely not. I mean, we, you know, we've, we've been very clear about the fact that we want um, a minimum of 16 rounds. You know, we'd, we'd love for the Australian Grand Prix to be a championship round, but we've done everything we can. It's now up to the Australian uh, Grand Prix Corporation and FOM. Um, it's not up to us. Um, and then outside of that, you know, we're delighted that Sam Shahin uh, has got his DA approved and we've got Taylor Bend 
coming on board as a, as a new facility, which is going to be extraordinary. Uh, the Wagners and what they're looking at at Toowoomba and any other development that we can help CAMS with is something that we're about. But we're kind of uh, maxed out on, on venues. So, you know, we're going to have to have at least, I would say, two international rounds to get to that full 16, you know, sort of, um, sort of round mentality. So we're an absolute Australian series and we're going to have a couple of races internationally and I've been very clear about that. And in addition to that, we're going to be busy because it sounds as though the, the calendar is going to be quite compact next year, give fans some, some regular racing at, at closer intervals. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and I don't mind admitting we got it wrong. I mean, there was a couple of things with Anzac Day and, and uh, clashes in, in Perth and the like that, you know, sort of mixed the calendar up. Once it was done in draft, if you like, this year we've been very clear that we'll start at Clipsal and we'll roll through and we'll have a mid-year mid break. You need three weeks to get all of our equipment to Darwin, three weeks to get all of our equipment to Perth. As I said, three weeks to come back from KL. But we'd like to have a two-week rhythm um, and, a, and a winter break in the middle and compress it into nine months, which is really important for the teams to give them a good, decent break as well. Let's talk TV. Six months into the, the new shared broadcast deal between Fox and, and 10, what's your report card on that? I mean, there's a group of fans on, on social media that are upset about not being able to see every race on, on free-to-air now. Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, um, you, you can't please everyone. And, you know, I, I think being CEO of the sport, it's not a popularity contest. It's, it's doing the right thing for the category. And so, you know, really to maximise the outcome and ensure sustainability of our teams going forward, you know, we had to have that right mix of free-to-air and, and pay TV. Uh, we're one of the only sports where if, it's, if it is exclusively live on pay, it is available in the highlights form on free-to-air, which is important to our fans who can't afford, um, you know, sort of subscription TV. Uh, but again, I think that you know it's early days. We've only had a few rounds, and people are getting used to where the highlights packages are. You know what what the value of the subscription offering is, and we're also seeing that um, that dynamic change, if you like, you know, where people are saying this is the best I've ever seen HD ad free, and um, you know, that, and that's really important to us. So so far so good. And um, as I said, I mean we're we're locked in for six years. Um, so you know, I'm I'm sure we'll all make it work. Big week for the sport. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.